Welcome back to Airborne Productions. Today we're going to be following up the review I did on the Vulcan ProTig 165. I've had it for the greater part of a year now. I've gotten it to fail. I've seen what's good and what's bad about it. I've done some upgrades to it. Without further ado, let's get right to it. I don't well with this thing every single day. I imagine most people that own it don't. The guys in the industry are probably using Lincolns and Millers and things like that. But for the weekend hobbyist that has some TIG projects that he wants to work on, this thing is great. That being said, even for hobbyists, there are some shortcomings that need to be discussed. For example, duty cycle. I mean, this is a little welder. It's a 165. And on 120 volts, you're only getting 130 out of it. If you're laying down beads all day and really pushing this thing, it will cycle out just like any welder. TIG, I've not really experienced that issue a whole lot. Usually TIG is a little more prep time, a little more time in between. But with stick welding, if you're burning rods all day, you can really get this thing to stop. On an anvil project I did, I had quite a bit of weld to lay down. We are welding a gap, filling it in, and bringing that gap out to the surface. It was pretty deep, required quite a bit of welding. Originally we were using eighth inch rods. We were running 7018, which isn't really necessary, but that's what I had at the time. And that was just too much for this little welder to handle. When it was cool, I could burn all the way through one of those eighth inch rods maxed out at 240 volts, just getting 165 amps out of it. But once the welder heated up from using it for a little while, it wouldn't run more than an inch of weld. Now most people who buy this aren't looking for a stick powerhouse, but for the small TIG project, this thing's great. Now the first upgrade I did to this welder, without question, without hesitation, was upgrading the old gas line. This hose connects the flow meter right here into the back of the welder. This green hose I bought from a weld shop for practically nothing. The old hose is this crappy plasticky rubber and it leaks pretty bad. I'm sure some people have had luck with theirs, but it's really cheap to just buy a new one that actually works right. So, without hesitation. I don't know if you'd call it an upgrade, but it has to do with the consumables. Here's the original kit stuff that you get with the ProTig 165. It's got a few different cups and a few different size electrodes, call it bodies, call it all that good stuff. I bought some thoriated and lanthanated electrodes. Lanthanated was more for general purpose, but thoriated is really good with stainless. I do plan on welding some stainless in the future and also bought two different sizes. Buying electrodes is something that every TIG welder does and it's pretty cool because you can get different results for different applications. So don't stick with what they gave you. Branch out. Same thing applies with stick electrodes. I've ran some 7018, some thicker stuff with that. This is 332nd 6011 rod, uh, good penetrating rod. This is 5 64 6013 rod, more of a general purpose rod. The 5 64 this welder can weld all day on, just to know. If you're running 240 volts, back down the amps quite a bit, uh, this thing will absolutely run, no problem. All of this welding done pictured, from the inside out was done with this 6013 564 rod. I know I'm singing this rod's praises quite a bit, but it matches really well with the duty cycle and amperage of this welder. Another really quick and easy upgrade I did was changing out the flow meter that came with it. The stock one, I questioned its accuracy. Um, and it's okay, it works. The ball one is a little easier to read. You get markings for both CO2 and argon, so it helps you out there a little bit. And it's a simple upgrade if you swap welders or whatever, you can always keep that. Another upgrade I did was getting a gas lens kit. You may have seen my video on it. This is just a cheap eBay kit, but it works pretty well. I really recommend a gas lens to anybody who might want a little bit better gas coverage. Please check out that video if you want to know more about this kit in specific. But yeah, pretty simple upgrade. The final upgrade that I would recommend doing to this welder out of the box would be the clamp. Now this is the stock original clamp that came with it. So far I haven't had issues, 
But these things do tend to wear out, the wire may fray, or whatever the case. And I've even heard of people having pretty bad experiences with the stock clamp that comes from these welders. Right here is a big old brass clamp. This thing's pretty good, it's super solid. The spring pressure is incredible. You can really open that up and get it stuck to things a lot easier. Get yourself a much better ground. Like I said, I haven't had an issue with this clamp. I think it's fine. I get grounds plenty fine. But this is a good recommendation if you guys do struggle with that. And they're not that expensive either. Speaking of the clamps, this brings me to a big point about this welder that I really don't like. If you do plan on swapping out your hoses, you're out of luck. They come with this little fitting. And it's some custom thing that they came up with. It's much smaller than the actual fitting for regular leads. Unless you make something pretty custom, you can't swap out the leads. You're kind of stuck with the stinger that you have, as well as the TIG torch that you have. Now, those items aren't particularly bad. I think they're actually one of the better parts of this welder. But, if you would like to change it, you're kind of stuck. Like I said, with the clamp, you can change out the end of it, you just can't change out this end of it. Yeah, so what? This welder's a little bit proprietary, you can't swap out everything on it, and that's okay. Honestly, the stuff it came with is good enough. And I don't plan on doing anything else with this welder. It's gonna stay on the cart and I'll wheel it around where it needs to go. The bottle's gonna stay right with it, but no biggie. The thing isn't really a powerhouse or a workhorse. It wasn't made to be. This thing is perfect for the hobbyist though. I can't recommend this thing enough, but just being honest, there are some good things, there are some bad things, but hey, this thing works great.